Good morning from the Swan Reserve. I want to say thank you to the Swan Reserve for having us out. Mm -hmm. Today, we're headed down to breakfast, then we're going to go to Magic Kingdom, and somebody is going to ride Tron for the first time. I'm it's so going to be Baby <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> Today will also be Baby yeah. Oliver's first trip into the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, I'm so excited. First Disney rides, too. I don't know what we're going to pick. Maybe Dumbo. You never know. Let's find out. Let's head down to breakfast. Here we are, inside of... Oh, well, the there's coffee grounds. Coffee. That's the the quick serve, and then over here, Amare for breakfast. They said when we when we checked in, he said it's like a Starbucks, but better. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This hotel is after my heart, isn't it? <laughs> there's a USBs here and down there too. I really like this though. This is so nice because it has like the couch and like it kind of feels like outside seating, but inside. Yeah. Ooh, look. These are Jackson's Mickey waffles. He's just eating sugar off the bottom of the syrup. We're gonna eat the. Eat the waffles with the syrup or with the sugar on them, buddy. Nom, 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 yeah. Nom. Here is my egg and cheese and bacon sandwich on a little croissant. Kind of looks like Starbucks, but it's not. It's from yeah. the little quick serve called Rounds. We also got an egg and cheese uh, sandwich on an English muffin. This no oh, bacon it? on it. Oh, I thought that was bacon. Okay. So this is just an egg and cheese on an English muffin. They like really got the cheese all like crispy. I love that. <laughs> we have a friend that really loves Justin Bieber. I was just going to say, I feel like he's following us. Justin and that's Bieber's what, playing everywhere we you go. You know what our friend says? He says that he's the soundtrack to your life. Justin Bieber? Yeah. Oh. Everywhere you go. Now that I'm saying in the video, <laughs> everywhere that you go, you will hear Justin hear Bieber. It. Yeah. It's pretty wild. So we ran back up to the room for one second because we forgot one thing. Well, now we are on our way to Magic Kingdom. Breakfast was pretty good. Like, yeah. It was enjoyable. Yeah. It was It was just like going to a Starbucks basically, yeah. um, but it was pretty good. Yeah. Tomorrow I think we're gonna try Amare. Yeah, so we check out breakfast. tomorrow, but we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do that before we leave. It was a buffet, but you could also order um, like entrees as well. Yeah. It looked good, because it was it's a, Medi a Mediterranean style restaurant. The dinner actually looks really nice. Ooh. Yeah, so I'd love to come back for dinner one day. Okay. All right, so fun, fun addition to the morning is we have a sort of flat tire. So we stopped off at the Speedway by the hotel and the air machine right here isn't working. So I don't know, I think daddy said there was no seal on it. The seal around the little hose, I think. But now we're filling it up. So we're good to go. We used fix a flat and then we filled it up now we're driving to Magic Kingdom. I'm glad we found it this morning and not tomorrow. Or after we were trying to leave Magic Kingdom. Yeah, that would have been like no fun. Let's go. That's Where? Right. Oh yeah. So, but now we're all good. Oh, show these signs. These are the new colors. Here are the new signs. Oh okay, yeah, I like them. I love the colors. Kinda... There's the old color right there, the purple Where? and red. Oh, you know what though? I like the purple and red, I think better. They're easier to read. Yeah. Monorail. We're headed into the Magic Kingdom. Baby's first trip to the Magic Kingdom. Ooh, pro tip. Yeah. Always choose the outside lanes. Yeah. I don't know why. Look at it, they're like all stacked up in the center there, but there's a wide open lane over here to the right. Look at that. All right, we're through security. And now we're headed over to the ferry boat to head to the Magic Kingdom. So, Baby had his first ferry ride. Yeah. And I wanted to mention, so I know that people think that the monorail is faster and it probably is faster sometimes, but what I really like about the ferry is it's a good place to nurse. Yeah. So there are, um, or to bottle feed, but there are some like little bench seats. And if there is one free, that it's just a great place to sit down and just feed the baby really quick before you get into the park. Yeah. And it's like nice and breezy under there. So it feels a little cooler. So I like the ferry. I just like the ferry in general because yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a boat water person than I am like a in the air train person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like trains on the ground. There it is. Baby Oliver's first trip into the Magic Kingdom. He looks riveted, <laughs> excited, can't wait. Look at him. The anticipation is palpable. So we went to City Hall to get Oliver's button for his first trip. And I'm getting one too, celebrating his first trip. All right, so we worked out our reservation for Space Ranger Spin, but there's all kinds of like fun, like 4th of July summer barbecue type stuff. With this one. Buzz Lightyear. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, Buzz Lightyear and a hamburger. You. Yeah, I'm gonna buy this shirt. This is awesome. How much it. is it? 
$37. $37. What do you need that bad? It's Party Source Rex. Oh, this is fine. Yeah, I like them. Cute. Ducky and Bunny over here, too. Look at them. They're chilling, grilling. I like That's this. A lot of cars. Oh, this one's fun too. It says laid back because it's the green army men or the green uh, aliens. Party animal. It's summer. Chilling. This is a bit thick though. Right? But this is fun. How much for this one? 60 bucks. I like it. These are fun. Oh, this lounge fly too. With like the Pixar ball. And Woody with his ketchup and mustard. Oh, it's a backpack. $88. Just having a look down Main Street, having a look at the crowd level, not too bad right now. But I will also say, we bought Lightning Lane for today. Uh, we bought, uh, what is it, Genie Plus for today so that we can get Lightning Lanes. And it worked out well for us because the rides that we can ride with a newborn and Jackson are limited. We can't ride any of the thrill rides that would have the longer waits. So I think we're gonna be able to get through kind of a lot of rides today in the short amount of time that we're here. So we're gonna go ride Space Ranger Spin right now, and then Jen's gonna go ride Tron, and then maybe we'll go and meet Mickey or something like that. And then we'll go ride something else, maybe Dumbo? Who knows? The world is our palm tree. We were just walking through Tomorrowland Terrace, which if you guys remember back to my recent hot dog eating extravaganza, I ate here in Tomorrowland Terrace, and it's very nice. It's air conditioned, but it is outside still. It's quiet, it's kind of like secluded. Um, and Jen just said, you know what? This is a good spot to nurse too, or to bottle feed. So, another quick tip for you. All right, first stop, Space Ranger Spin. 55 minute wait, but we do have Lightning Lane. All right, first stop. Ooh, I feel like the air conditioners has not been as cranked as I would like for them to be. He's, He's like, amazed. what is happening right well, now? Well, so Jackson picked this as Baby Brother's first ride. So it's very special. Yeah. Because Jackson, Jackson wanted to make sure that he had a really good first ride. All right. Into the Space Ranger spin. You ready, Jackson? You feel the button back here? Right there? Yeah. Oh, look at us go. Keep it going, buddy. You're doing good. Just hold it down. Look at you. You got 500 points already. 600 even. You're doing great. You got to aim for that volcano up there. That's where our goal is. Got to make the volcano erupt. Keep pushing the button. There you go. You did good. Yeah, you got 2,000 points now. Nice work. Oh, I got to spin us around. Oh, no. Pitiful. That little bee down there. That's a good one to try to aim for. Follow Zerg. You're doing really good. Look, there's Mommy way back there with Baby Oliver. First ride ever. Wow. I feel like the baby's probably freaking out over this one. Oh, buddy, you're at 3,000 points. Wow, look what you did. We caught Zerg. You did that, we beat him. We did it, we got the bad guy. There's Buzz Lightyear. He's telling us good job. Oh, it was like Arnold Schwarzenegger just then. You did 3,000? Let's see what you are here. That means that you are a space scout. Look at you. I'm a planetary pilot. All right, we're gonna do Carousel of Progress real quick because it is a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Shining at the end of every day. Just a dream away. Yeah, it looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. What year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. And believe me, things couldn't be any better than they are today. Besides, it's not going to rain today. My lumbago isn't acting up. I'm not going to say I told you so. We've come a long way, though, since the turn of the century, over 20-some-odd years ago. You know that pilot fella, Charles Lindbergh? He's about to fly a single-wing airplane all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> He's never going to make it. Oh, we're going to blow a fuse. Oh, brother. My favorite thing is this extension cord that just runs through the sink. <laughs> We've got something now called the rat race. Did you ever hear that one? I'm involved in something now called commuting. I drive into the city for work all day, 
and then turn right around and drive all the way back. And the highway is crowded with fellow rats doing the same thing. There's a great big Man, how futuristic does this look? Let's switch the image over to the Did TV so the resident flying ace comes. Oh, well, there's a source Ooh, for back there. Hey, everybody. I'm done Can programming our new voice activation system. Great. Tell the refrigerator to bring me a root beer. Up to 550 points. Hey, she's getting the hang of that thing. Uh, uh. Big mood complete. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> Anyone for pizza? Oh, another Christmas turkey ruined. All right, now that we're done with Space Ranger Spin and Carousel of Progress, Mommy's going to ride Tron. Ooh, it's going to be exciting. Are you excited? I am. I'm like a little nervous. Oh, you'll be fine. I'm sure I will be, but I just, it's a new ride. You know, I hope you so get on the front row. Yeah, I hope I do. I probably can't. It's got to wait longer, right? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to get my picture in front of the sign, too. All right, Jen's leaving us now to go I'm ride nervous. Tron. I'm even more nervous because I'm going by myself. You'll be okay. But I'm going to vlog on Tim's phone. All right, I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay. That was a loud train. That's gonna be Jen in just a minute. I'm headed down for my lightning lane. I accidentally walked the wrong way and I started to go all the way back into Tomorrowland. So that was fun. <laughs> but it looks like I'm gonna get like right on. I'm very excited. Here we go. Hi. All right, I did it. I tapped in, I'm going into the grid. Supervised young team blue users at all times. Team Blue, welcome to the grid. When the gate opens, follow your path on the floor. If you are assigned the bar vehicle, you must walk behind the light cycle. Tron light cycle run is a thrilling, high speed roller coaster type ride in the dark. My light cycle is next. Exciting. I think I'm gonna be in, in this one back here. I'm in row seven, so I'm the very last row. I was over here hoping to get a shot of Jen going by truck with like on Tron. Like that. But she didn't text me and tell me when she was getting on the ride. I told her to. But uh, so I didn't, I didn't have the camera out and ready. So I just watched her go by and I waved at her, but I didn't get it on film. So just imagine she went like this. So we'll see how she liked it when she gets on. That was awesome. <laughs> I actually didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, but that was really cool. Really cool. I'll talk to you more about it when I get outside. I'm just walking out of the building now. But yeah, I love that. I wish it was longer, obviously, but really good. All right, we just exited the grid. Now we're in Storybook Circus. We're headed to Pinocchio Village House to get some pizza. And in there, we will ask Jen her thoughts on Tron. One of my favorite things about walking through Magic Kingdom is all the kinetics that you get, the movement of the rides and the people moving around. So like right now, we're next to Seven Doors Mine Train and occasionally you'll see a train going by, but we can see Prince Charming Carousel moving off in the distance and then the flags and everything. And then just the hustle and bustle. All right, we made it into Pinocchio Village House. Got some pepperoni flatbread. Got a margarita flatbread, a side salad. I got some French fries because Jackson's little half pizza came with apple slices and a cutie and sometimes he doesn't eat those and also an apple juice but he really is eating those pizzas so give it to me what do you think of Tron oh okay so first of all I'm sad because I didn't realize I had Tim's phone I was filming on Tim's phone and so I was texting him like his phone number telling him I'm next I'm next but it wasn't going through because I had his phone. I thought it would go to his watch, but it didn't. So he, you guys didn't get to see me like actually riding it. I'll, I'll put in my video and picture here so you can see that, which was really, I feel like, hopefully it turned out good, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I think it was definitely too short, obviously. That's everybody's complaint. But I liked it a lot. I felt like it was thrilling because you're downward facing, because you're in the motorcycle position. So that made it feel like scarier, not scary, but... More thrilling. Yeah, it, it, it would be a boring ride without that aspect, I think. And it also made it, like, you felt more, like your stomach goes up a little bit more because you're facing down. 
And also, I fit into it fine. I was worried about my like my knees, my legs, but the bars didn't even touch my legs. Yeah. So um, I, it was it was fairly comfortable to me. And I don't know. I really did like it. I I forgot that it was a. Spicy. It is. No, it isn't. Oh, it isn't. Not spicy. spicy. You're having good. pepperoni pizza. That's what Jack's <laughs> review. It's not spicy. <laughs> Um, I also forgot it was a launching coaster, so that was really fun. Like when we launched through, that was my favorite part. The outdoor part was my favorite part. Yeah. But it was it was really neat, and I, I feel like because it's indoors and it's dark, that also made for a better ride. So I would totally ride it again. I would not wait longer than 30 minutes to ride it. Though. How long do you think you waited? Because we did. We bought a lightning lane. Oh, so I got in line at 12:41, and I got on the ride at 12:48. So I waited seven minutes. Totally there you worth go. it. Totally $20. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, it was, it was great. All right. Since we stopped at Pinocchio Village House, the next logical step right afterwards is it's a small world. Because, as you can tell, Oliver is excited for it. Mm -hmm. And he's ready to ride. It's a small world. Look at him. He's gleaming with anticipation. All right. Time to tap in. did it. I'm remembering my time here at midnight, the last time we were here, riding Small World by myself. All right, I'm ready. It's gonna be like Splash Mountain. You know, the baby just fed up right before we got on the ride. Right, and we, we don't have the stroller or any of the bag with us or anything. He already hates Small World. Oh no. <laughs> what do you think, Jackson? Yeah, there's a lot of coins in there. Join us as we travel deeper and deeper into Mary Blair's fever dream. And then these guys are like woven, made out of wicker. They're frightening. And they're talking too. But yeah, the cactus and the donkey and everybody. We oh. love the hula dancers. I feel you, Oliver. I feel you. Oliver just had his first time using the Rapunzel bathrooms. It was a momentous occasion. What did he think of the bathrooms? But Oliver? Yeah. He was asleep. Oh no, he slept through the whole <laughs> he thing. He slept through the whole thing. What the heck? What did Jackson think? Um, he loved washing his hands in the little sink. Oh. Yeah. There you go. It's pretty busy though. Look, Fantasyland is. Uh, I always like it. Whenever I say this, it does this. It like opens up around. Yeah, me. right. And it it really nobody. is. I swear it's busy. I know it doesn't look very busy, but it really is. Let's see. What's Peter Pan's wait time? That's always a good tell. Fifty-five. Is it? Is that what it says? Double nickel. Fifty-five. Double nickel. Double what are we nickel. On prices, 55. right? Let's see what it says. We got to get on the race cars, the Grand Prix, before the rain. Oh yeah. I gotta check my, my what watch. What does it say? 75. 75. Whoa, Peter Pan is 75. Wow, that's a busy, busy one. A nickel and two pennies. A nickel. And a nickel. <laughs> All right, we need at least one more ride before this rain sets in. So we're heading over to Tomorrowland Speedway, which I made a lightning lane for like two hours ago, and it has since expired. I'm gonna see what they say because I can't reschedule it. Like, you're only allowed to experience a lightning lane experience once. So like, if I had a lightning lane, if I had a lightning lane for Tomorrowland Speedway and I rode it, and then I was like, oh, I want to ride it again. I can't make another lightning lane for it. But I didn't ride it. It yeah. just, we missed the reservation because we were you're eating, eating lunch or something like that. So hopefully they'll still let us on. I don't see why they wouldn't. We'll find out. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, chaos. Look at you go, buddy. Woo! Whoa! 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 You're doing great! You're doing great! Oh no! Whoa! Whoa! Oh my goodness! Whoa! Goodness gracious, Jackson! What are we doing? Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Ah. Heading up to Tron right here. Look at this. There it is. Also, a little bit of rain coming in. Might have to take a midday break back at the hotel. You did it, buddy. You won the race. I 
How did you win that car that was next to us? They went slower than us. We did it. All right, so while Daddy and Jackson were on Tomorrowland Speedway, Mommy went into Star Traders and she thinks she found some new merch. Something interesting. I found this, this little orange bread cup. It's so cute. It says spread sunshine, not shade. And then it has a little orange on the straw. And it's like a metallic orange top. This one is $25. It's cute, I like this a lot. Here is a pride stitch. He's holding a rainbow heart. I really like this. This is so fun, oh, it's part of the pride collection. So they are giving a portion of the proceeds to, I don't know if they said exactly which charity, but it's an LGBTQ plus charity. This one's $35. I might be going to the Trevor Project. Let me just double check. So here's the tag. It doesn't actually say which charities they're donating to or even that they're donating. So I'm not sure. I'll have to ask and find out about that. But this is cute. I like this a lot and it's like shiny. So I think the last time that Tim came into Star Traders, it was all Tron merch. And right now they only have the Tron merch on this section here. Everything else is back to normal, regular merch. I want to show you over here, they have this really cool retro collection. Oh, and I thought I thought this was really cool too. It's a Space Mountain Christmas ornament, but when you flip it over, it's got like the little astronaut guy with the Space Mountain trains. That one's fun. It's pretty hefty too. And this one is 30 bucks. 30 bucks. I love this fuzzy bucket hat. This one is cool, $35. I don't know if it's worth $35, but it looks pretty darn cool. Actually, it looks really hot because it's fuzzy. I don't know when I'd be able to actually wear that, but I like it. And then this is the retro collection. I literally had a shirt just like this when I was in middle school, but it was not a Walt Disney World shirt. It was just these exact same colors. It looked identical to this in the 90s. This one's 40 bucks. If it wasn't 40 bucks, I would totally buy it. And then this bag, I love the bag. Here it is right here, it's so cute. I love that everything's like yellow with like the flowers and it has the flowers on the inside too. So cute. And this one's $35. It's like a little fun crossbody. And then they have the t-shirt wall. I love this one. I want to get this for Jackson, but they don't have a size. How cute is that? They're all largest. <laughs> Last item of business here, Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. Oh, that's what we were looking for. Mint chocolate chip right there. We weren't sure if they had it. They oh, have it. They do. All right. They do have plant-based frozen desserts available. Let's Okay, we'll match. We'll both get mint chocolate chip. So in the beginning of the video, I was telling you guys all the places that were like good for nursing. And I think, and I, there are definitely more than what I said in the video. So I think I'm gonna make a video on just that. Okay. Just good nursing spots like in the different parks. What I'm do you gonna, think? I'm gonna make a video it? on where to eat ice cream really fast before the rain comes. Oh no, is this one of them? Uh, hopefully. We'll see what happens. <laughs> what do you think, buddy? How do you like your ice cream? Yeah? Did you see you're wearing an ice cream shirt too? You're like ice cream ready. <laughs> All right, now we're making our way out of Magic Kingdom because you guys probably can't tell, but I think it's gonna rain here. Let's look down this little alleyway right here. That's how we'll really tell. There's bubbles and balloons everywhere. Oh yeah, look at that storm right there. Oh man. All right, it's uh, feeling like it was a very accomplished day. We did good, we wrote a lot of stuff. We ate some ice cream, we ate some pizza. Perfect. Coming up on the new Polynesian Tower, just passing the wedding pavilion right here. And then, boom, Polynesian Tower, DVC. What if they're gonna put a pool between those two? Doesn't look like anything just yet. All right, so we've made it out of the park. We're in the parking lot now, headed to the car. We have reservations for Rosa Mexicano at five it's about 4 30 right now should be plenty of time to get there also hopefully we don't have too much of a flat tire oh, oh my gosh, I, forgot. I think i think the fixed flat held because i checked i can check in the app what my I, tire pressure is i was Still having at, so much fun at disney that i forgot about the real world the, the uh, flat tire <laughs> i need to make a reservation to get new tires anyway so i think this is the this is the universe saying tim get new tires all right and now we are here at the dolphin resort so there's a swan and a dolphin we're at the dolphin and that's where Rosa Mexicano is. All right, so now we are over at the Dolphin and we're headed in. Walt Disney World Dolphin. Oh no, this thing again. These doors are difficult. This one's a big one. Oh yeah. 
but there was no actual parking in their parking lot. So this must be a very popular resort. Right. You can't even park here. Well, there might be a convention happening. This is a convention resort. Oh, gotcha. They just recently redid this entire lobby. We were here for the grand opening of it. We'll put a link to that video in the description down below. All right, so normally we would just take the escalators down, but we need to take the elevator down because we got the stroller. Why take the escalator when you can take the elevator? Why take the elevator when you can canoe? <laughs> All right, I'm pretty sure we're close to it. We came outside. We got a little bit lost. We're finding our way. What? How does that get what? Why is it a very big one? Why not? It looks nice, doesn't it? We found it. We did it. That's right across from Blue Zoo and right next to the fountain. Oh, yeah, here we go. Rosa Mexicana. Oh. Ooh. Fun and exciting stuff. Got an open kitchen back there. Cool bar right here. All right, they already brought us out some chips and salsa. He said that this frozen margarita recipe that is the pomegranate margarita has been around since 1984. And then he said that this one, Josefina, is the one who uh, one founded, he was one of the founders. And they love this tequila because it is aged in a, in a rose barrel. They also said there were 101 different tequilas. Oh. And something else, there was another spot. Oh, that they're known for their table side guacamole, which we ordered. So I'm excited yeah. to see. And you can, you can get varied um, heat. So we opted for mild because Tim can't do like spicy. Anymore. You, can do, you, can you have hot. to always tell him anymore. You can do hot, you can do medium, you can do mild. And you can top it with different things like grilled pineapple, bacon, bacon and cotija cheese, or even I think he said crab meat. Oh. Which is very interesting. I would do that if you if you weren't here, I would do the one with crab meat. Oh. Well he doesn't eat crab. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Rosa. Thank my name is Jordan, I'm making your guac for you. I'm gonna start off with my little paste here. A little bit of salt. Do you care if I film your process? No, absolutely, please. Yeah, I don't want to give away any secrets. No. Once <laughs> I discovered this, my guac never tasted the same. I'm just going to put a little bit of jalapeno in there, but it will still be very mild for y'all, right? I'm going to ground this down to a paste right here. Ooh. It really helps to spread the taste of the uh, all of those ingredients around with the guacamole when I hold it in. Yum. Is this how you make it at home? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Ever since I started working here, this is 100% how I'm doing it forever and ever now. I even invested in one of these nice mocha here. That's awesome. It's only like 20 bucks on Amazon for something like this. Oh, nice. It's fantastic. I'm gonna just mash her up just a little bit here. Fold it and get all that good taste around. Then we're gonna throw one more onion. Yum. One little more cilantro. And two tablespoons of tomato here. Just gonna fold her in. So there it is. It looks so good. I'm so excited. So this is made table side by Jordan, a guacamole expert. And so you're gonna try it? You think so? Everybody's name tag says my passion is at the bottom. What was his? All, I don't know. Do you think it was guacamole? Ma Our Rock servers was fitness. Was what? Fitness. Oh, really? And then the lady that we asked for directions at the bar, hers was food. Oh, mine would be food. The guy that we bought our breakfast from, his passion was his wife. Oh, I like that. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? Are you liking your trip so far? Mm. All right. Okay, so I actually found out about this place from our friends, the theme park foodies, and they did a video, and I'm going to link their video down below. But something that I learned from their video is that this particular restaurant is also in New York City. And they, this restaurant was the first Mexican fine dining restaurant in New York. Oh. Yeah, and they, they I think it was in 1984. Okay. They, yeah. So isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Yeah, and now they're here. I feel like we actually have a very good foodie scene here in Orlando. I think so too. I think it's very like um, eclectic. So our server was asking us what kind of drinks we wanted and we said we don't drink. So he suggested some of the spirit free options and we were having trouble deciding what we wanted. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what? I'll bring you guys out all of them. And I said, all right, let's do it. Look at that guacamole. Roll that beautiful guac footage. This is so good. You know what, Chipotle has nothing on them. <laughs> so we have Jordan here with the drinks. We've got a cucumber mint refresco here. Okay. We've got a guava colada. Ooh. we got the mango ginger refresco. Oh, that sounds delicious. Oh, that's my favorite one, absolutely. Yeah. This is the butter and spritzer. Ooh. And last but not least, we have our in-house made hibiscus pomegranate infused iced tea here. Oh, yum. 
And these are all non-alcoholic? All non-alcoholic, yeah. I'm obsessed with our non-alcoholic list here. We've got so much good stuff. So this one has, is this one a little spicy? Uh, it's got, it's, it's not spicy, it's got a little bit of like a, just a soda ginger kick. So it's got a little bit of like a bite to it, but it's not like a spice per se. Got it, okay. And then the chia seeds in it have like a little interesting oh, little Oh, the chia seeds, yeah. okay, got it. Yeah. He's like my number one favorite on there. Well, they look beautiful. Good, <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else you grab me for the moment? So I'm gonna start by trying the cucumber mint refresco. This one has fresh cucumber, uh, fresh mint, lemon, and sparkling water. And it's garnished with a huge slice of cucumber and a big mint spray. I love this. It tastes like green juice. <laughs> it's really good, but a little bit sweeter. But not too sweet. I like it a lot. This is really nice after a hot day at the park. We spent all day at Magic Kingdom. All right, so Tim is gonna try the guava colada, guava, coconut milk, Canela infused agave nectar, fresh orange, and fresh lemon. This tastes like a melted sherbet. But it kind of, that's what it sort of sounded like. It's very delicious. Do you want to try this one, buddy? Mm. Is that yummy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's see. We got the cheeseburger over here. Oh, oh Jackson got a cheese. Right that is so big, buddy. Oh my goodness. Hey, bud. Move your purse real quick. The black bean empanadas. Oh, the black bean empanadas. So we have the crema and we have the queso fresco and they fill with just black beans as well. Ooh, it's that's super what Tim delicious, ordered. Of course. And then one of my personal favorites is the um, Camarones Diablo. They're tossed in a chile de arbol. And to cool it down, we have the tortilla chips, cabbage, and the avocado range as well on top to help you with that as well. That looks so delicious. So delicious. I don't know if you guys could hear, but this is Esteban's one of his favorites. Absolutely. So I decided I'm going to try this one. This one sounds too good not to try. Yes. Oh, oh, very nice. A little spicy. The cheese is creamy. The beans are creamy on the inside. Heavy corn flavor on the outside. Very good. And the crema is also creamy. So it's like a nice creamy, crunchy fry, but not really delicious appetizer. This is vegetarian. This, I like it. I like it a lot. I want to try this mango ginger refresco. Precious. The spirit freezer we got us. Oh, that's very good. It just tastes mango juice. Fantastic. Really good. With a little bit of like a, you know ginger has like a throat spice? It's not spicy. Do you know what I mean? So this is mango puree, lemon, chia seed, and ginger beer. That's what I'm tasting is the ginger beer. I like how it looks like a hand. Oh yeah. It's like... The devil's hand. <laughs> it does, right? Okay, let's see. Let's give it a little try here. Their uh, tempura butter. Real spicy? Yeah. Uh -huh. I would say it's a medium spice. And it has like a smoky flavor from the chili. Okay. It's really good. I think that, so they also have tacos with these shrimp in the tacos. I bet those are so delicious. Yeah. They're, this is this is pretty spicy, like a back of the throat spice. I love it. I highly recommend it if you like shrimp and you like spice. And a little smoky kind of chili flavor. This next one is the blood orange spritzer. Blood orange, hibiscus, pomegranate syrup, lemon, and sparkling water. That tastes like a fancy orange juice. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's not as thick as an orange juice is. It's kind of like a more of a refreshing drink than like a morning, I need to fill up on orange juice drink. <laughs> not as sugary either. Really nice. That was my really nice drink. Like, that's really nice. Okay, so I got the enchilada tasting. So from left to right, I got the roasted chicken squeezes, which is salsa verde, chihuahua cheese, crema, cilantro, and onion. And then in the middle, we got the beef brisket, which is classic red guajillo chile sauce, cotija cheese, pico de gallo, and crema. And then on the very end, this is, they say, their most popular enchilada and their favorite, which is the duck carnitas, mole poblano, queso fresco, and crema. Here's a look at the three enchiladas that I got in the enchilada tasting. So of course, first we have chicken, then brisket, then duck. And Jen got the birria quesa tacos, braised Angus beef brisket, queso Oaxaca, cilantro, onions, consomme dip, and corn tortillas. 
So I got these because Esteban said they were one of his favorites, but also he told me that they, the difference between their birria and other places is that usually it's, it's pretty fatty and pretty oily, and here they cook it down. So they cook out, they remove all of that like excess oil. Um, they're super tender, and then it's served with the chihuahua cheese, which is kind of similar to a mozzarella, so it's very cheesy, like the cheese pull kind of a cheese. And then the beef consomme that it's served with is what you dip them in. So it's just like a really rich, delicious birria taco. I'm very excited to try them. These are so good. If you like meat, it's obviously very meaty. I think you'll love these. All right, so I tried all three of the enchiladas, and I have to say, the uh, the mole, amazing. It tastes like chocolate sauce, but not sweet. Still savory, but there's these desserty flavors in there. Super creamy, very thick, delicious. The that was the duck. The brisket tastes like a barbecue. Tastes like a backyard barbecue. Awesome, love it. Like super smoky flavor. Nothing more spicy at all. And then the chicken was kind of just like a safe flavor. It was very good, but still tasted very safe compared to the other two. If that makes sense. Like that might help you decide on which of these three you might like. Chicken, if you're not an adventurous eater, go for the chicken. Brisket, if you like a good barbecue with like Mexican flair to it, get the brisket. If you love interesting and unique flavors, get the duck. It's awesome. Like all three of these were fantastic. But like I think that that should help help you decide on which one you want based on what kind of adventure eater level you are. I think my birria tacos are the same brisket that you yeah. have in your enchiladas and it is so tender. And I love that it has it didn't look like it had a lot of cheese when I showed it, but it really does have a lot of cheese. And the corn uh, the corn tortilla that it's in Although it has all of the um, the meat and the cheese, it's not they're not soggy, which I like. I like that they keep their their like crunchiness. I also like that their kids menu is pretty safe. Like I get nervous sometimes that the menus are not going to have anything that Jackson will eat. But here they had like chicken fingers, burgers, but they also had the quesadilla. So I like that he could try something authentic, but he could also have something that we're more used to. Um, but yeah. I enjoyed it, I had a really good time. One thing I wanted to say too, where we're sitting, we have a really cool view of the fountain. I don't know if you can see that, but there's all these seashells that come down to the main seashell. But we have a really cool view of it from this table that we were sitting at and it never rained. All right, so now we are back at the hotel after dinner at Rosa. Eighth floor. And we're headed down to the lobby to meet up with the, the PR company that set us up here. And we're going to head down. back up to the view. And the view is their special event space here on the 15th floor. And it is not open to the hotel guests. And this is only used for private events. So you can't just come up here. Even if you are staying here, you have to have this for a private event, such as a wedding or something like that. Oh yeah, it's cool looking, isn't it? So as part of this special event space, special meeting space, there is the view balcony for perfect viewing of Epcot fireworks. Where, where, oh yeah, Epcot fireworks over here. And if you lean out a little bit, you can see Magic Kingdom over there. So if you listen, we can hear Fantasmic's finale down there. And then we're watching Epcot Forever over here. And then if we look through the window, we can see Magic Kingdom fireworks. Oh, there it is. Wow, Fantasmic is so loud. All right, we're all done. We slept one more night. Today we're checking out. You don't want to leave? No. Why not? Because I'm not ready to finish the day at the hotel. You're not ready to finish the time at the hotel? Did you really like the hotel? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Did you sleep good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, why we need to just do two days? Today's our checkout day. This is just how many days we got. It's just the way that it goes, buddy. But yeah, it was really good. I really enjoyed staying at the Swan Reserve. I want to say thank you to the Swan Reserve for having us out and providing the room for us. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed the fixtures. I really enjoyed the artwork. I really enjoyed the style of the room. The bed was super comfortable. We actually all slept in until 8.30 this morning. Also, I will miss this view. 
Look at Epcot over there, looking all glorious. Oh, it's fantastic. It's such a good view, too. And the Magic Kingdom off in the distance, too. Oh, here's something that I just found this morning. Come check this out, Jackson. In the room with the king bed on it, because it's on the end here, you can look out this side and you can see, see Expedition Everest over there? And the Tree of Life? Look at there's, that hotel. There's Animal Kingdom. Oh yeah, that's Grand Destino at Coronado Springs. One thing I wanted to mention, last night when we were up in the view, the private event space, you can see all four parks from up there. And I did want to mention again that that is a private event space. It's not open to just general hotel guests. You have to be having a private event up there. You have to rent it out for a private event. But it's really neat that you can see all four parks from up on top of this hotel. One thing that Jackson has loved doing is looking out the windows here because they're floor-to-ceiling windows. Oh, you can see anything. Let's see if that's the trying to be I one. So we've been watching the cars. We've been trying to figure out what the cars are as they drive by. Ooh, a dump truck or like a trash truck. This is fun. Oh, and Toyota Prius. Toyota Prius. The other thing that should be noted about this hotel is because it is part of the Swan and Dolphin, you can what? use all of the amenities over here at the Swan and Dolphin. Honda. So if you wanted to go down to the Grotto Pool, which is, is right there across Honda? the street, you could. No, that's a Mini. A Mini Cooper. You could go right across the street and use the Grotto Pool. All right, here we go. We are checking out now. It was a good stay. I want to say thank you to the Swan Reserve for having us out. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.